bit of shape and space. Two things we're going to look at. One is to do with convert. I mentioned before that we did. Um, I did a, a ratios and proportion um, webinar a little while ago. I think it was the last one we did, and and, hope, and many of you recognise the names were on that one, or I've sent you the recording afterwards. And if not, I can send that afterwards. Um, there are two parts of sort of ratio and conversion and changing things that come up, and I didn't cover them that webinar because they're quite specific. Um, but they are do follow some of the same rules. One of them to do with currency, and one of them to do with maths. Uh, maps. Sorry, not maths. Maps. So I'm going to cover both of those now here briefly. So let's look at currency first of all. Let me just get my whiteboard back up. Okay, so looking at currency, when we did ratio, we were saying that you might have a workplace where the ratio is uh, 20 employees to one manager, for example, and it would have written something like that. Currency is already written, usually written very similar or can be written very similar. So if we take, and I did check this earlier, uh, one English pound, British pound, is equivalent currently to 1.85 Australian dollars. Uh, it's a nice rounder figure for Australia, something like that. And, and again, sorry for my pound and my dollar sign. And they're sometimes written as an equals, because one dot the pound equals 1.85, or written a bit like a ratio where you have the two dots in between. But it still means the same. It means one pound is the same as $1.85. So if I went to the, the post office, I don't know, people still go to the post office to get foreign currency. But if you did, and you took them and said, here's a pound, can I have some Australian dollars? They would give you 1.85 Australian dollars. Or if you went in and said, here's 1.85 Australian dollars, they would give you an, a British pound. So that they are exactly the same, the same conversion. The question you may be asked is, I have got, oops, I'm not going to draw that line just yet. I have got 10 pounds. How many Australian dollars am I going to get? Relatively straightforward calculation, this one, but it doesn't matter. I could have seven pound 90 or whatever it might be. We'll kick to nice straightforward figures. So we need to work out how did we get from one pound to 10 pound? And think about it, we just multiply by 10. One multiply 10 is 10. The rules when I did ratio, I said, was whatever you do to one side of the calculation, you have to do exactly the same to the other. So we've times the one side by 10, so let's side this side by 10 as well, and that would give us $18.50. So relatively straightforward, I've multiplied this side by 10, so I do exactly the same this side, I can get it. As I said, um, do those. Remember, If on this side, I've actually got seven pound 90. Well, what I've done here is I've multiplied by 7.9. So I need to use multiply this side by 7.9. And having worked that as an example, so I don't know why that would come out. But whatever I do to the left-hand side, I go to the right-hand side. Nice and easy, that one, because there's a, a one on the left-hand side. So it's easy to see what I've done with that. A little bit more difficult if we have some, uh, go the other way. I'm just gonna draw them again. So let's say we have one dollar, uh, one pound, sorry, is equivalent to one dollar. 85. And this time we know that Mary, I always said Mary with the example, and I don't know, Mary and Joe are the two names that usually use examples. I'm not quite sure why. Let's say that Mary has 72 Australian dollars and she wants to know how many English pounds did she get. But it's a bit more difficult now because it's harder to tell how did we get from £1.85 to $72. To $72. Well, what isn't as hard is to do it the other way. How can we get from $72 to $1.85? And the way we can do that is divide. If I do 72 divided by 1.85, I can tell you that equals 38.92. So our conversion involved dividing or multiplying by 38.92. And we're going from the bigger number to the smaller number, so we divide. In this case, we're going from a smaller number, and we want to do a bigger number, we're actually multiplying. And as I said, whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. So this side, we're going to multiply by 38.92. So our answer here, and again, it's a bit easy because it's a pound. Our answer here is 38 pound 92. So 72 Australian dollars is worth 38 pound 92, if we're being exact. So as long as you think of it as a ratio where whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other, all you've got to work out is what have I done on the one side? Have I divided or times to get from one number to another? And I'm going to do exactly the same with the opposite, if you like, on the other side as well. As I said a number of times, this is functional skills. So it may just say, this is the exchange rate, what is 72 Australian dollars? But it's more like to give you a scenario. Uh, let's use Joe this time. Joe's been to Australia, uh, he's come home with 72 Australian dollars, and he wants to change it back to English. How much money do we get? And then you can work out. Or it may be, 
um, that um, Joe wants to, there's a, the exchange rate is, as I said there, one to $1.85, that's probably somebody saying. So it may say, Joe's been to Australia, he's got $72 left over. And if he comes back to the UK and exchange it, the exchange rate is $1.85. However, if he exchanges the money in Australia before he comes back, then the exchange rate is one pound to uh, $1.73. And it may say, so this is if he does it in the UK, this is if he exchanges it back in Australia. And he may be, where is he going to get more money from? So you'd work out how much is that worth in the UK, how much is that worth if we change it in Australia, and you look at which way is it better. Is it better for him to save his money until he gets back, or is it better to exchange his money before he leaves? Uh, and again, there'll be a question a bit like that in the practice test, so I'm not going to go work through that now. So you may not get a straightforward just convert. You might have to convert a couple of things and compare them, or you may say, uh, I think we worked out that... Um, so, uh, so we worked out here that 72 Australian dollars was worth 38.92. So without knowing that, it may say uh, Jack changed it, has got 72 euros and he, uh, 72 dollars. And when he gets back to the UK, he thinks he'll be able to exchange that for 40 pound. Is he correct? Well, you then work out that it's actually 38.92. So no, he's not correct. It's not 40 pound. And you didn't get that. So converting currencies, just like we were doing with ratio. Uh, show that on the screen. The rule mainly being that whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So if we know that we've multiplied one pound by 10, then we can multiply the other side by 10. If we work out that $72 is divided by 38.92, we multiply by 38.92. The converting currency, very similar to what we did for ratios when we did that. And the final topic I'm going to mention today, my board keeps not open, there we go, is to look at maps. Um, so actually, I should have stayed on that screen anyway. So the first thing to say about maps, for just scroll through, is you may get a, a grid or a map a bit like this. And this is actually taken from one of the practice tests, I think from the old functional skills, but very relevant to the new one as well. Uh, and in fact, what I'm going to do, just to make life a little bit easier, I think, I'll just take a quick screenshot of that. OK, so if we see that kind of example there, um, and you'll see that it's got a grid. I think the question of this is you've got to make a plan where you start at your hotel. You have to visit however many different places and end back at your hotel. And you have to work how long it is. Again, you can do this practice question at another point. The key here is to look at the scale then. And if we look at the, this uh, number 200 down here, uh, then you'll see that it's saying that width there, all the way across there is 200. That's one big square. And well, you can see that on your screen, but the sort of big square lines there and actually a little half square there. Now, if halfway there, if the whole thing's 200, we know that halfway is 100. So in effect, if you look towards the top, that kind of line there would be worth 100 meters, as would that, uh, as would that, as would that. So basically half a line there is 100 meters. So if we were to work out how far is it from our hotel to our cafe, well, we've got 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters, 400 meters, and then 500 meters. If we're going from the cafe down to the fish market, one, two, three, four, five, six hundred meters, for example. So this question is uh, looking at it there, hopefully relatively straightforward. You need to plot your points out, come kind of the exact question, and you have to visit six different places on the way. Start with the hotel, it doesn't matter which route you go, um, but you're following the route and you're calculating how many meters in total that you're going. So that's a very common kind of question. You're given the scale there, it may not be 200 meters, it may be that those squares are that that double square there is worth, um, I don't know, 10 meters. Well, that would mean every individual scale there is worth one meter. So look at the scale that it will always give you a scale. Look at that and then follow the instructions for that question. So hopefully that one's not too bad. And, and depending on how you are at map reading normally, uh, that might be a, an easier or harder question for you. What's a little bit more difficult is when they give you a, a map with a bigger scale and ask you about measurements on it. So a common thing for a map is to have a scale of one to 25,000. That's relatively common for a map or an ordnance survey kind of map. And again, a bit like a ratio, that would be written like that, one dot dot 2025 uh, What this means is one on the map of anything is worth 25,000 in real life. So if I went one centimeter on the map, that would be 25,000 centimeters in real life. If I uh, use my finger to measure on the map, the length of my fingernail, and on the map, I've traveled as far as my fingernail. I'd be traveling 25,000 fingernails in real life. 
are particularly useful way of measuring something. But it, just to show, whenever it says on the map, the ratio of one or the scale of one to 25,000 basically means if I do something on the map that's one, then I do 25,000 in the real life. Uh, similarly, a fingernail example. So therefore, if I do two on the centimeters on the map, I'm traveling two of those, so that would be 50,000 centimeters in real life. Okay, so that's the principle behind it. The scenario I'm gonna give you now and work through is to say that on the map, I've traveled on the map. I measure on the map and I've traveled eight centimeters. And I wanna know how far I've traveled in real life. But the first thing to note is, we said that one on the map is 25,000, so eight on the map in real life is gonna be eight times 25,000, which I can tell you equals two zero 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 two hundred thousand centimeters, which is correct. That is the correct answer. Is on the map. I've traveled eight centimeters on the map. So really, that's the equivalent of hundred thousand centimeters. As you can probably appreciate, saying to somebody, "How do I get to the nearest park?" Oh, you just traveled two hundred thousand centimeters down there. They would look at you as though you were a bit crazy. So we want to have a, a measurement that's a bit more realistic in real life rather than centimeters. If you think back to the very first slide that I presented today, we talked about the relationship between centimetres, metres and kilometres. And the one thing I said is there are 100 centimetres in a metre. So to convert 200,000 centimetres into metres, we would just divide that by 100 because there's 100 centimetres in a metre. And if I do that, I can tell you that equals 2,000 metres. A little bit easier, better number to deal with. 2,000 metres is a bit more realistic than 200,000 centimetres. In distance, we can actually go one step further, though. And we said that there, again at the start, if you remember, that there are a thousand kilometers, uh, sorry, sorry, again, yeah, thousand meters in a kilometer. So, actually, to convert this to kilometers, if I divide that by a thousand, I get two kilometers. Saying somebody they need to go two, two kilometers down the road is a lot more sensible than saying to them you need to go 200,000 centimeters. So, we just proved there on the map, if we travel eight centimetres on the map, we have travelled the equivalent of two kilometres in real life. So the initial conversion, red, the initial conversion, this one is relatively straightforward because we said we did eight on the map. So it's just eight of these means eight of these, which gives us our figure, which is really good. The difficulty here is that's not a realistic figure that we can use in terms of 200,000 centimetres. What you'll probably find, the question would say, you've traveled eight centimeters in the map, how far is this in kilometers? And so this is the bit you need to remember, is that there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So to convert meters, we divide by 100. And then we've got a meters figure. So if we divide that by 1,000, there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. That gives us our answer of two kilometers. So a couple of steps involved there. Um, but again, as long as you take them one at a time, there's two calculations you do in effect. One is the conversion from eight centimetres to real life, and then you're reducing down from uh, centimetres down to kilometres. Uh, very, very common kind of question you'll see in um, the real test uh, for both the old and the newer version of functional skills. So just as a reminder, a map on the scale, if a scale is one to 25,000, which is a fairly common kind of scale for a map, we all know that eight centimetres on the map is 200,000 centimetres. If I divide that by 100, that tells me how many metres it is. And then if I divide it by a thousand, that will tell me how many kilometers it is. So there you go. Then with the two um, types of, of measurements I wanted to mention, very, very common in the test. You are very likely to get something about currency and or something about math, probably both of them in, in any kind of test you do. And for the newer functional skills, maybe in the calculator bit or the non-calculator bit. The only other calculation that you might get in terms of measurements, well, actually not only other one, you, the, there are some other measurements. You may have to look um, at a, a price grid and it says you want to get a train from Manchester to Birmingham uh, and you've got to look at how much it is well you can look at the grid Manchester to Birmingham off peak uh, on a Tuesday you look at those kind of information that's using measurements the other kind of measurements is using time and it could be that kind of thing what time does that train leave and um, or more commonly maybe there's an example again in a practice test where you'll see about flight you're flying to New York, you leave at 10 o'clock in the morning, the flight takes seven hours, and there's a four hour, four and a half hour time difference. So that's correct, what's the time? The, the reason I haven't gone through a time example is time doesn't work on a calculator. As you'll probably appreciate, calculators work in tens, tens up to 100, up to 1,000, up to 10,000, and we tend to go in that thing. So we divide everything by 100 for percentage and those kind of things. Time doesn't, time works out 60. 60 minutes in uh, 60 seconds in a minute 60 minutes in an hour and then 24 hours in a day and seven days in a week 
So calculators don't work very well um, to do with time. If you wanted to do half an hour, if you did 60 divided by two, uh, it would give you half of that. So it's 0.3, which is 30 minutes, but isn't actually 0.3 because it's half, which is 0.5. So it gets very confusing when you're using calculator for time. I would therefore strongly recommend if you get a question on time where you've got to do some calculations, I would use your common sense. Think about a clock or a watch or write it down. And like I said there, a plane leaves uh, England at six o'clock in the afternoon, takes seven hours to fly to New York. Well, if I do six o'clock in the afternoon and add on seven hours, what time does that take me to? And then I then say, well, it, there's a three hour time difference, no, say five hour time difference. So I'm then going to take back five hours and it's simply working on a bit of paper, fingers and toes and those kind of things is a lot more beneficial with time than it is trying to do that on a calculator. Time doesn't work well with the calculator. For three hours, so that's why I haven't gone through that. But if, if you do get practice questions on time and I will send some along with this presentation as well and you're unsure, let me know or myself or Eamon know and we can talk through that with you. But time is a lot easier to work out logically than it is to try and do calculations on um, because the, the figures aren't nice and round how we like them. Uh, right, 